So welcome everyone. We're going to get started. We're going to start with the executive director's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just wanted to update the board and the public that uh, we have received six additional public comments regarding hospital budgets. They've all been shared with the board. Um, the other update is to remind folks that we will be meeting again tomorrow. We're going to start at 9.30 in the morning here in this room. We'll go until 11.30, and then we'll come, and that will be all hospital budgets. And then at one o'clock, we will reconvene. We're going to have a data um, presentation from um, our data team, and then we'll go back to hospital budgets if needed. And I would just remind the public to sign in if you haven't already. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda are the minutes of Wednesday, September 5th. Is there a motion? I'll move And I'll second. It's been moved to approve um, the minutes of Wednesday, September 5th without any additions, deletions, or corrections. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So, Pat, I believe that uh, last week we left off um, at the finish of uh, Central Vermont. That's correct. Um, I'm going to give you a little intro, though, if that's okay, a little um, additional information. For the record, uh, my name is Pat Jones. I'm Director of Health System Finances for the Green Mountain Care Board. Our agenda for um, the rest of this week um, is outlined on this slide. The next steps are that, um, as uh, Chair Mullen just indicated the board provides some preliminary decisions and leanings for 10 of our hospitals on September 5th. Um, we'll go through the remaining hospitals today and then, um, you know, revisit some additional information that we've received on the hospitals that you already discussed. Uh, formal public comment, the public comment period closed yesterday. We um, obviously always are um, willing and happy to take public comments, so comments can continue to be submitted, but the formal period closed yesterday. Final decisions, um, our objective is to still make decisions uh, on September 14th. Or with, sooner. Excuse me? Or sooner. Or sooner, yes, by, by September 14th. Um, with uh, orders by September 28th, both of those meet statutory deadlines. Uh, the way that we'll approach this today in terms of obtaining your um, input on hospital-specific recommendations is that we'll initially review the hospitals that we didn't review last week, that's CBMC, Porter, and the University of Vermont Medical Center. Center, and then we'll review the previous hospitals with the goal being to finalize decisions with votes um, this week. A recap of the work that we've done to date. Just a reminder that uh, the Green Mountain Care Board's fiscal year 19 budget guidance includes a net patient revenue growth target of 2.8%, and then you also approved an allowance of up to 0.4% for approved health care reform investments. So the total um, growth target for MPR from 18 to 19 is th up to 3.2%. There is no target in the guidance for commercial rate increases. At the September 5th meeting, you all began discussing um, the individual hospital budgets. The discussion focused more on commercial rate increases and on MPR growth, but obviously both are related. Um, for most hospitals, um, board members, it, we, we attempted in the PowerPoint that you're going to see today to um, indicate where there seemed to be at least three board members with a particular leaning. But um, as I think you all will remember last year, 
oh, last year, it feels like last year, <laughs> last week, um, the board members did have a range of um, reductions, particularly around those requests and commercial rate increases. What we've done in the interim um, is to analyze the impact of those reductions in commercial rate increases on NPR so that we could give you a sense of where NPR is going. Um, and again, what we did was we, even though what I'm presenting in the PowerPoint is where it seemed like there might be some consensus, we did analyze for the lowest range that a board member recommended, a mid-range, and then the high range. Um, and the high range tends to be what the hospital submitted for NPR and, um, and rate requests. For, for some hospitals, you'll note, I'm gonna show you a table in a moment, but that that mid-range and high range um, is the same um, based, because the board had sort of a low range and the higher range, but nothing in the middle. Um, and for all of the hospitals, as I mentioned already, the high range numbers reflect what they requested in their budgets for commercial rate increase and NPR growth. The results, um, high level. The fiscal year 19 budgets as submitted by the hospitals, and again, equivalent to the staff's high range analysis, would um, result in a system-wide NPR increase of 2.8% if you um, agree with all the staff recommended adjustments. And most hospitals included healthcare reform investments at that 0.4% allowance. I wanna note here that there were um, three adjustments for the UVM Health Network hospitals related to ACO accounting changes. Um, that are, um, they're, I, I, the staff believes, and um, I think you probably will as well, that there's some validity if we want to do apples to apples comparisons from 18 to 19, those accounting changes should be at least considered. We did not um, include them in the high range analysis. If we did include those adjustments, that NPR increase would be more like 2.2 to 2.3%. So I just want to um, call that out. Without the accounting adjustments, the mid-range um, board member proposals would result in a system-wide NPR increase of 2.5%. And similarly, without the accounting <laughs> adjustments, the low range would result in a system-wide NPR increase of 2%. So from a system-wide perspective, all of the options, high range, mid range, low range, would result in an NPR increase that's below that 2.8% plus healthcare reform investment growth target that was in the 19 budget guidance. Obviously, it varies by individual hospital. Um, this, this is a table that shows a summary of the staff analysis, so it shows um, what the low range rate is um, for each of the hospitals, what that translates into in terms of a low range NPR. It shows the mid range rate and the mid range NPR, and then the high range rate and the high range NPR, as well as the NPR as submitted with all adjustments, including those that the staff isn't. Um, recommending that we make. And so the three hospitals in that last column that, um, that vary are um, Porter, um, the accounting adjustment would take them from a 4.5% NPR growth rate down to a 3.2%. Central Vermont, it would take them from a 6.3% NPR growth rate to a 5% and then UVMMC um, from a 1.7 to a 1.1 percent NPR growth rate. So I just want to make sure that those are pointed out. Um, and just to speak a little more to the ACO related accounting, I've asked um, Kelly Thoreau, my colleague, to, um, to she's sort of our um, hospital budget team expert on 
all things ACO accounting. And so we wanted to um, let her have a chance to just go into a little more depth on those. So we wanted to add a slide um, to show, just to explain a little more about the ACO accounting and um, why we don't have a firm decision here yet on, on where to go. Um, accounting for fixed perspective payments, uh, ACO accounting participation fees, and the ACO related downside risk is new in the accounting world. There are not ACO specific FASB guidelines yet. Um, and auditors and accountants do not yet have consensus as to how to reserve for risk and account for the ACO related expenses and revenues. During the FY19, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, Federal Accounting Standards Board. So during the 19 budget process, GMCB staff uh, requested information from hospitals on how they are currently accounting for these expenses and revenues as well as the risk. And of course, we got various answers from hospitals. Um, I think there were only a couple who accounted for um, revenues and expenses in a similar way. Everyone was, was doing things differently. Um, after the FY19 budgets have been approved, our plan is to convene interested parties to develop standardized guidance for ACO accounting. Um, and that information will be included in the 2020 budget guidance. So we really do have an apples to apples comparison and we can make those, we can make that decision in a thoughtful way, um, getting input from everyone who deals with this every day. So due to the current uncertainty and the variation in reporting, GMCB staff recommends that the board consider potential adjustments to NPR growth calculations as factors in decision making for affected hospitals, but not make formal adjustments this year. Because our fear is that if we, do, um, if we do have them adjust it formally within the system and we decide something different, then we'll be in the same place making adjustment to adjustment to adjustment but it, it should be a consideration in your decision today. Kelly, can I just clarify though? Sure. For the UVM network adjustments mm -hmm. where we have it in two different places, one place in 18 and one place in 19, um, I think we need to reconcile that it will be one way or the other so that we're consistent apples to apples. Otherwise, our NPR rates and things like that that we're comparing to you know, will definitely not be accurate. So we may choose to say it's not going to be the way UVM has done it right now and put into expenses, and we'll just reflect it up you know, as a reduction in NPR, like, all, like most all the other hospitals we believe are doing, you know, at least that part, the risk reserve is a separate issue. Um, otherwise, we'll be reporting numbers that I think won't make sense. And that could also be true for other hospitals as well. Um, which is our concern here, is if we have UVM, Porter, and CVMC change where they're reporting um, and don't specify to other hospitals exactly where that needs to happen now, right after decisions, then we're still coming from a different point for various hospitals. Um, are there eight? I don't think any hospitals. of the other hospitals, I think they're consistent year over year to each year on how they're doing it. Here, we have a complete disconnect. They're doing it one way different way in 19, um, whereas other hospitals are doing it the same way year over year. I'm just saying it will not reflect the correct NPR change if we take it as entered into our system right now. I can check that, but there may be one other hospital, one or two, who did make an adjustment. They just didn't highlight it in the same way that, that UVM did. Okay. And, uh, Lori. Um, just a note on that, um, I think, uh, and I want to reflect what I think you're saying, Maureen, but that is that um, 
if at least we could get consistency within for those three hospitals for their MPR year to year, even if it's not quite the same. So the comparison across hospitals, we might not quite be there yet, but if you were to accept that adjustment in some fashion for the three UVM network hospitals, at least there would be consistency for each hospital from 18 to 19. Is that, am I reflecting yeah, that? Because, you know, numbers will come out of here and, and we'll be looking at, you know, a quarter, for instance, will show, if we don't make the change, over 5%, where they're at 3.2%, roughly around the 3.2 if we adjust for that. And, you know, I just want to make sure, you know, it is consistent. But, you know, yeah. we can take that off. Yeah, and um, I'll just note for everybody that the the, rec the request from the UVM Health Network hospitals was to adjust the fiscal year 18 base, um, so that the um, so that we would have that comparability between 18 and 19 when looking at growth over over time. Um, I think our struggle is is that the best way to do this, but that was the um, request from the hospitals was yeah, to adjust that 18 base. I understand base. that, and that may be the way they're going to report it, and that they need to for their auditors. But I'm not trying to simplify it, but it's moving money from expenses to reduce NPR we can do it to 19 as well. I mean, it can be done either way. How they need to report it for auditors can be different for how we report it collectively, but if it's consistent, it, it'll make more sense. I just think it's gonna haunt us. It's gonna haunt yeah. us anyway, but it's gonna haunt us later if we you know, have different numbers and we say, well, in total, it's the whole group is coming out at X, but it's really different if you just make this one shift, so. Yep, understood, and so we will let you all um, make that decision and we can go back and, uh, and do calculations based on that. So um, as Chair Mullen indicated, we had gotten part way through the Central Vermont Medical Center discussion at our last <laughs> meeting. Um, not much is new on this um, slide, except that um, the staff had a chance to go back and look more carefully at the dermatology um, provider transfer request. And we are now recommending that that $250,525 be approved um, as an adjustment uh, to the 18 base um, because that um, that transfer is a replacement of an independent dermatologist who um, retired. So we are recommending that that, um, that that dermatology transfer be approved. That brings their MPR growth down to 6.3%. Um, again, we, you know, whatever you decide to do on the accounting adjustment could bring their MPR growth down far further. Um, but otherwise, this slide remains um, pretty much the same. So what so we... Before you move on to there, does anyone object to the uh, acceptance of the uh, dermatologists? That's what we're talking about, right? Dermatologists? Yep. So I think that's a decision point that we can check off as having been made. Okay. So that takes care of what was going to be my um, first question on this decision point slide. Um, the second question is what to do with the accounting adjustment. So this is, I'll just jump in on that. From my perspective, quite frankly, I don't have the accounting expertise to know the right way to deal with the adjustment, so I don't, really have a strong feeling about that. What I do have a strong feeling about is not having an inflated NPR because of an accounting change. Yeah. I agree with that too, and I'm wondering if the solution is not just adjusting 18 to reflect this accounting change, so that 18 to 19 reflects the same way of looking at that. And we have a real apples to apples comparison. Yeah, so, I mean, I would defer to Maureen on that. I think the other way to do it, if we're, if the staff is not sure exactly how to adjust 18 would be to go with the lower, the right, if you will, NPR, and then indicate in the order that we'll make that adjustment sort of 
after like somewhere mid-year or something like that so that things can get trued up in whatever way the stakeholder group figures out but that um, we're not necessarily rushing <coughs> it and doing it and changing it twice. I actually like that proposal because I think that this is going to take some time to uh, figure out but at the end of the day everything has to be apples to apples and it may require and it may not require but I'm just saying it may require two different treatments for accounting purposes. One is for the accounting for the board and one is for the accounting for the purposes of financial statements. And I think that's really up to um, a working group to determine that. And so I think we should try to keep a little bit of flexibility. Yeah, and I would just add that whether you change it in 18, you know, by, by changing 18 to, to take the expenses out and put them into the expense category or 19, the change to NPR is about the same. It, it's, it doesn't you know, dramatically change. The exact change um, percentage-wise is pretty close. The only difference, I would say, is the majority of all the hospitals accept the new VM network, and maybe there's some adjustments elsewhere, Kelly, that, are, that I haven't seen, um, are doing you know, what they did in 18, what UVM did in 18, they're carrying that forward into 19. That, that's why I've been saying to do it to 19, but the actual percentage change is, is about the same either way. Um, so, in a way, I think we can go back and look at, at what's best. I mean, some of the issues may be the history and things like that because um, the network hasn't changed, you know, restated 18 to revise all their numbers in 18 the way they're rolling through. So, you know, we also have to figure out how this is going to be represented through history because we, we look at our charts and if all of a sudden we're going to be going back and every time if we don't restate the history, um, we'll be making those changes too, and it's not that done. So it's, yeah. Net of it is, either way should come up with the same overall impact, you know, marginally. It might be like 0.1% difference or something. It's not, it's not significant. Okay. Um, and we can try and do those calculations for you for tomorrow, if that's helpful. Another all-nighter, Pat? Yeah. Hope not. <laughs> no more 2 <two-three. laughs> Okay. So um, health care reform investments, you all um, agreed at the last meeting that you were leaning to accept the staff recommendation on those, which is to accept the 0.4% um, health care reform investments. Is uh, everyone good with that? Okay. Let's chalk that one off as being finished. NPR growth rate, um, again, um, it's 5% with the acquisition and the ACO accounting adjustments, 6.3% um, just with the acquisition or transfer adjustments. Um, I will note that in the um, projections, the fiscal year 18 projections that CBMC was um, submitted with their uh, with their 19 budget they they were running um, a little ahead or a fair amount ahead of their 18 budget that's actually leveled out um, um, since then we got updated uh, projections in their presentation at the budget hearings and so that's sort of leveled out so that their 18 projections are now running very close to their 18 budget, so I just wanted to note that. Um, the options here are to um, accept the uh, NPR growth rate or reduce it. Um, I will note, um, you know, since the board has shown quite a bit of interest in commercial rates during this process, if the commercial rate um, was decreased, um, it would uh, um, lead to a 5.7% NPR growth rate with just the transfer acquisition adjustments and a 4.4% NPR growth rate with the accounting change. Um, and then in terms of the commercial rate, same thing, options are to accept what is one of the lower um, you know, commercial rates that were submitted. I think this is like the third lowest um, rate that was submitted by um, any hospital or to reduce um, that uh, commercial rate increase. So I think that uh, where we left it last time, uh, Maureen had suggested 1.8, I had suggested two, 
Tom and Robin were both unsure and we hadn't heard from Jess. So I guess starting at that end of the table, Robin, have you finalized any of your uh, thoughts on this? I don't know if I would say final, but I will <laughs> tell you kind of my pros and cons list. So, uh, uh, so you know, I think the NPR growth is high, even with if we accept like all those adjustments, we're down to 4.4, so it's closer to our target of 3.2. Um, and our guidance does stress uh, the NPR as the target. Um, we obviously, I think all of us have taken an uh, interest in the commercial rate side because part of what we've been trying to do as a board is connect our regulatory process together so that what we're, when we're making a decision in rate review, we're being consistent in hospital <coughs> budgets and similarly with the ACO process. And so I think this, a lot, of, at least for me, a lot of the discussion around the rate increase is trying to be consistent with at least the QHP filings um, that we approved with a statewide rate. Now, of course, there's a lot of noise, which is what makes it, in my mind, somewhat complicated because here we're approving an increase to charges. There we're approving a, a, a net of charges, if you will, the actual payment rate between the insurer and the hospital. So it's not like a one-to-one. -one, um, which for me makes it like I'm not particularly comfortable when I feel like I'm kind of shooting in the dark and I don't know really how those two things tie together. Um, so, uh, however, like reducing the commercial rate is one way to also reduce the NPR. So, and I guess the one other thing I would say is that um, I, you know, I do think that for the hospitals that are all in on the all-pair model and taking a leadership role, that they do need to be able to make investments beyond, they need to be able to make operational investments to change the way they're doing business if they're going to be successful under that new model. And uh, I don't know where that exactly like influences me in terms of a number per se, but it's just an important consideration for me because I think we're only, we're talking about year two of the model coming up in 2019. So we're still very early days. Um, so I, I guess where I sort of land with this is um, I do want to see the NPR growth rate come down and I'm still struggling with whether we just bring that down and uh, assume, be clear in our order that we did direct the carriers to try and negotiate below and then leave it to sort of the private market to determine whether the rate comes down uh, or uh, actually reduce the rate. So I, I know that's wishy-washy, but that's where I, where I am. <laughs> hey, Tom, how about you? Well, um, I'm kind of uh, following Maureen's lead on this, um, if, if she's still where she was at the last meeting. Um, and I would, could support the 1.8% um, as a rate increase and adjust the NPR according to that. Um, I get to that point by um, kind of uh, looking at uh, their overall total margin um, um, and assuming that uh, uh, the rate was reduced to 1.8%, um, that would have an effect on their margin, obviously. Uh, but it would take um, to replace that margin through efficiencies um, of 1.5% uh, uh, to replace it totally and would still leave their expense growth, uh, uh, growth um, at 5.1%, which is, which is high. Um, um, in the uh, Qualified Health Plan uh, rate review process, uh, we did uh, insert a 1% efficiency assumption um, that was not uh, – uh, t tactically targeted, but was strategically targeted. And um, given that uh, for Central Vermont Hospital, given their large budget um, and the fact that they're, uh, they're looking for a $3.3 million increase in, in commercial uh, revenue and um, $2.8 million in 
uh, Medicaid and another 1.4 million uh, in Medicare, it just seems uh, that you know we're pushing the envelope slightly to reduce our uh, NPR, but do it in a way that um, uh, this hospital uh, could manage to it. Can I just add? Sure. Yeah. One of those he referred to me, so I'll. Uh, <laughs> um, one one thing on this hospital which I hadn't really taken into consideration. Um, is the thing that was driving me here was the 5% increase over, year over year. And in all their justification, part of that was because they were trending hot for 2018. So they kind of did this whole analysis off of 2018. They hadn't been rebased, but now they were trending hot and they were going 3.2% above that. I wonder if, since they're now back to their original budget for 2018, in their presentation, I wonder if the 5% still holds, if there really are still 5% above, and if in fact that may have changed. So that may be one consideration on the 3.2. Um, one other thing I just want to personally, I just want to get on the record from my perspective. Um, my point of view on the insurance rates and what we did with the insurance rates, I'm not looking to force this process into that number. Um, because, and I say that because I look at them independently and they're timed at a different time. And I know there can be a disconnect, whether it's higher or lower, and that will have to be adjusted. And the reason I say that is when we, what we did say is traditionally the board has not increased rates for commercial insurance, but has brought rates down. And so that's why I felt, you know, there should be an adjustment down to what the insurance companies have done. But I think it would be unfair to the hospital process if we said we are now forcing to that before we even saw the hospital. So I'm not trying to force to a number. At the end of the day, it will be what it is in the hospital budgets and it will be something different in the exchange rates and that will catch up and reconcile you know, down the road in the next year. Um, and I totally appreciate we've got a disconnect in the timing and things like that, but I, I don't think we can you know, state that that rate will have to be the same. That's my point of view, and I know that's where the board can have you know different points of view, but I definitely am not looking back to say, what did we do there? I think it'll catch up with us down the road, but there are other factors besides just rate and those insurance. There's also utilization and things like that that can be different that are driving that, so. Um. Okay, Jess. Okay, um, so, I am thinking about, even though at one point I think I threw out there the idea that we look at the network together holistically, and I know the board um, sort of suggested that we uh, look at them independently, but in my head I, I'm still actually looking at them to some, to some degree holistically. And the reason I say that is because I am less moved or concerned about the NPR growth rate for CVMC and Porter uh, because I do view the system, and I think what UVM Medical Center, uh, the network actually rather, is trying to do is move care to the communities, and what that's, you know, so right care, right place, right time, and what that's gonna do is that is gonna grow NPR at those two community hospitals, and it's going to decrease it at the medical center. And that's what we actually want, I think. I think we wanna have it at the lowest cost local centers versus the tertiary care center where possible. And my hope and my belief is that the network is doing that. So I say that to say that the NPR growth right here, I have to think about the ACO adjustments some more and I look forward to some of the analysis. I still am unsure, I feel like you do, Robin, about I don't, I'm not an accountant and I don't know where it should land. But I do want, I don't want them to be inflated because of an accounting adjustment. So the, apples the, to apples. five percent with the accounting adjustment either way, whether we do it in eighteen or nineteen, yes, it's roughly five percent. What okay. it'll be. So it Okay. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm less concerned about five percent, for example, if I think that that's because care is moving back into those centers. So I, I think of Porter and Central Vermont similarly. And when you look at what UVM network is doing, their NPR is well it depends upon the adjustment, right? But it's you know 1.1%. 1.1 if you make that adjustment, right? So that's a lower than what we came in at. So it, in some ways it looks to me like what they're doing is what we want them to do. So holistically I would say that if I think about it that way then I'm less concerned about uh, the 
NPR here at these two um, other hospitals. Uh, when I look at their days cash on hand, 112, that's below the state average. You know, and I think there's some you know, concern there. We'd like to see that higher, some reserves, particularly since the, they are in the all care model. I hear you, Robin, on that. You know, there needs to be some adjust, uh, some uh, room for investments to ensure the success of that model. They're on all three. So when I look at this budget and I look at the 2.8% commercial rate increase, again, as Pat said, that's one of the lowest rate increases um, that we're seeing in hospitals. And I appreciate that because I think we need to keep commercial rate increases at a reasonable rate. So I guess what I would say is I'm fairly comfortable with this particular budget for those reasons as submitted. Um, and I guess that's what I would say. So I think what I've heard is two people say 1.8 on the commercial. Um, one person say they're comfortable with the existing. One person say 2% and Robin, I'm still a little bit vague. Um, yeah, no, well, I was too, so <laughs> it's understandable that you were as well. Um, I think you know it, it really helps me to have everybody's perspective and be able to actually talk about it, which we obviously can't do before we get in this room. So um, I appreciate uh, the ability to do that here. Um, and I think I'm with Jess. I'm OK with it, as submitted, with the 5% with the 2.8. So I think we have a, a split board. I would be willing on this one to make a motion to go to 2.3 percent, so a half a percent reduction, um, which is a little bit above where we are, but split, you know, kind of in between, um, and really driving that that you know for me the half a percent increase or decrease um, is just driving to get the more cost savings throughout the budget, and um, you know also looking at a consideration of where the NPR growth is. But if someone else, we could have discussion, or if someone else wants to revise that, um, fine with that. So does anybody wish to second it? I'll second it. Um, I, I do have one question here: that the one percent. Um, uh, Estimated value of one percent commercial rate increase is six hundred and seventy-four thousand. So if we're doing uh, half a percent, we're looking at a three hundred thousand plus. Correct. I mean, so so that's the that's the dollar value here. That's correct. Okay. Is there further discussion? Um, I would just throw discussion on. I wonder whether we want to not vote on these three budgets before we go through them because we went through all the budgets the other day and didn't make a vote and allowed for public comment. And I, I think my recommendation was that we kind of get, get to the point. I don't know if you're going to vote, but that would be my recommendation, that we wait until after we go through these three budgets, have gone through all the budgets, one pass, allow any public comment before we do votes. I'll defer to the request. I don't like it because I think we're putting a lot of pressure on ourselves for tomorrow, but that's okay. Well, I'd like to. Does anyone else want to comment? Does anyone do? What do you guys? What does anyone else think? Do you want to vote on it now or? Personally, I would uh, wait at least till the end of today, assuming we get through these three, because. I mean, we could come back and start with these three if we get through them today, because then we'd have an opportunity for at least people in the room to to comment. So I'm, I'm with you, Maureen. So rather than debate it any further, let's just defer to the actual vote. So I'm Florida. withdraw the motion, Maureen. Oh, okay, I'll withdraw the motion. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next hospital is Porter Medical Center. Um, again, uh, not much changed, not, nothing really in this slide. Um, they do have a request for the ACO accounting change, um, and that would change their NPR growth rate to 3.2% if we were to do that, which is at the target. 
um, assuming we have, you approve their health care reform investments, 4.5% without that adjustment. So um, the decisions here are um, the accounting adjustment, the um, health care reform investments of 335000 which the bo uh, staff is recommending that the board accept. Um, and then the MPR growth rate would be um, the options are to accept or reduce. We again um, calculated what a 1% um, reduction in the rate would do to MPR growth. It would come in at 4% without the accounting change or 2.7% below the MPR target with the accounting change. There's a question um, that's come up and um, board member Yusufer will um, be able to speak to this as well, but uh, Porter is one of the, ho is, is a hospital that has actually reserved um, its risk um, for participating in the ACO model. Um, it estimates that risk at about 2.2 million. The effect of that is that the risk um, does not um, that does not show up in MPR. So the MPR rate is lower than it would be if they treated um, those reserves for risk differently in an accounting uh, sense. And then commercial rate, again, um, the options are to accept that same 2.8%, again, the third lowest um, of any hospital or to reduce that. Yeah, I'll just add the, and I've been, um, been trying to work with, with um, Porter to, to try to figure out, you know, what the best way, I guess what, what's really driving my concern on this one is their net FPP, so net of the 2.2 million for the ACO is $17 million. So a 2.2 million reserve on the 17 million is a big disconnect for me because I thought the maximum risk is 3% um, in total, up or down, you know, roughly was a 3% total risk, which would be significantly lower than $2.2 million. So that, so that was kind of my first concern, and I believe that's what they received from the ACO, so that may be something we need to go back, because if, if that's the risk they're taking on $17 million, that's a significant risk for that piece. So that was the first part. The second part is if they are assuming that's that, that the, the um, original number, $2.2 million higher, if we adjusted that out of NPR, instead of being at 3.2, they would be, I think it's like five and a half percent. So it's, I think it's 2.4 percent on their net for last year. So um, I'm as confused about this one, I think, as you know everybody else is. It's just a large number. I know the recommendation from staff is to you know just deal with this offline, and I guess I'm willing to do that. But it it's something we need to to dig into because. If in fact that's true, it carries through the whole PL if the risk doesn't happen. So I'm just, there's just a big disconnect in that number um, relative to the size. I think the whole, for UVM, I think it's 10 million uh, for their risk on a significantly larger number. So, so I'll not make that a big deal for this right now because I think it'll confuse it. So I started with uh, Robin last time, so I'll start at this end, Jess. Well, I guess a lot of what I just said about CBMC then applies to Porter. Um, in terms of so, in terms of the commercial rate, I'm, I'm fine with the commercial rate. Uh, I think my questions are related to how we deal with the ACO accounting. So I don't have an answer for that because I don't know. As you just described how that risk, where it should be booked, where the reserves should be booked, and I so I'm just, I'll be totally honest. I'm, this is confusing to me. Yeah, so, and just to clarify, this has two things. One, it has that they put the expenses down. That would get them to 3.2. Right. And then the other is we've, you know, said we didn't want hospitals reserving for risk. Right. 
and they've reserved $2.2 million, $2 million for risk, which if we said, okay, we weren't going to do that, that brings this to 5.6%. 5, 5. So I would say, yeah, I think it's about 2.4%. Um, it's 2.2 .2 million on 80, 80 something million, so it's, it's over 2%. I mean, one of the things last year Okay, this one, I have a little bit different take on, on just the rate. Um, in 2017, we rebased Porter for 2018 and um, did not make any, any adjustments, you know, for the future. Um, in 2018 versus their budget, and I know this isn't final right now, um, and I do think operating profit and income comes into play. I know there's been some notification, maybe it shouldn't, but they had a budget of losing $200,000 and they're making $5.4 million. Part of that certainly could be synergies through the system and that they're benefiting from, from UVM and, and things like that. So part of it could be accounting. But, you know, for 2018, they're going to be, you know, above what their budget was for top line by seven million and for bottom line by 5.4 million. So I don't have a right answer or, you know, what I'm kind of throwing out there, do we jump ahead of that at all? Um, their 1% of rate increase is worth about $400,000. Um, if I just were looking, you know, at that, I could see being a zero here. Um, which would be about, you know, a million dollar reduction, really going from the significant overage in the prior year. So I, I know that's pretty extreme, but it's really looking at it more to say, you know, at what point do we say, you know, hey, you need to, to, to kind of give back to the system because you're increasing your profits significantly and I you know it's tough because that is a good thing to do and then when you go to 19 they're going back down to 3.3 million so instead of being at the 5.4 million in operating profit they're going down to 3.3 million which again kind of tied to me that they were about two million dollars over you know change going down that they had that excess in the current year so I know I throw that as kind of extreme but that's that's um you know what I at least want to throw out and why so it's, it's really related to you know, coming in much higher, not doing anything in 2017, because the alternative is when we wait until the end of 2018 is over, and we could make adjustments then, but then, what, you know, then it's much harder to get into the system, and we can't, you know, we've heard from the insurance companies, we're not changing rates midstream, so we don't get the benefit of it. So, um, that's where I am. Tom? <coughs> So um, this is one of uh, budgets where cumulatively to me um, little things add up to big things over time and um, I go back to um, the uh, when we worked on the commercial rates and was able to get a, a fairly close look at the impact of rates, insurance rates on people um, that don't get any assistance, whether it's premium assistance or cost sharing assistance. And, you know, those folks are facing um, double digit uh, uh, premiums in order, in, in, in order to afford insurance. So here, um, I'm, uh, I see that Porter has uh, been very disciplined on their expense side with a, a run rate since 2015 of 2.7%. Of um, I note, and I don't understand, um, admittedly so, but I note that in terms of their total requested increase 
5.3 million of it comes from commercial insurers. Um, it's a negative 541,000 from Medicaid and a negative 2,142,000 2, from uh, Medicare. I don't understand those swings, but they seem pretty volatile. Um, but overall, um, uh, I, I think that um, at 2.8%, uh, we're looking at about a, um, a $900,000 um, uh, total there. And um, I, I, I could, um, and knowing that, uh, that a Porter is in somewhat of a recovery phase, um, and that to make up that difference uh, um, in terms of efficiencies would only be seven tenths of one percent. Um, I could support a 1.8 percent rate increase and adjust the NPR accordingly. Okay, Robert. Um, so I would let me start with the reserve issue. So I. My inclination on the reserve issue would be also to add that to the to-do list and figure out a consistent way to do it um, with the caveat that for me there could be a difference between a critical access hospital and other hospital types because of their reimbursement methodology from Medicare and quite frankly I don't understand how the ACO FPP and the critical access designation interact in terms of the cost accounting and settlement process. So I think we need to look at that to really understand whether and how those things interplay because that could potentially, I can see a world where Medicare would still do the cost, the CA reconciliation in some way that could claw back some money that was paid in the FPP, at which point it would make sense to reserve for that as a small critical access hospital. I don't know if that's accurate or not, just to be frank, but that's something that to me needs to be sorted out in order to make a rational decision about it. Um, so for me, um, so I would uh, kind of just punt that quite frankly and not worry about it this year because we, we also don't necessarily know or haven't collected all the information consistently with the other hospitals. Um, so with that aside, I would probably just stick with the 3.2% NPR and the 2.8% rate increase because it's consistent with our guidance. Okay. Um, and I had it down that um, I could live with the submission as is, but I could also accept um, a commercial rate between 2 and 2.8. So it looks like we're all over the map, and this will definitely be one that will be put off. So at least you have those ranges, I guess. Um, just one other question for you all. Um, do you wish to accept the health care reform investments? I do. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I just say one other thing to Maureen's point? Um, I, I appreciate wanting to try and if somebody's running hot in their projection, trying to true that up in real time, I think that that makes logical sense to me. I'm not sure it's necessarily entirely consistent with our enforcement guidance that we've put out there. Like if we wanted to do that in lieu of then an enforcement process later on, I think we'd want to be clear about that in our guidance. Yeah, and I'd, I'd also just add, I, if, if in fact the two million is in there for, for reserve and is dropping all the way to the bottom line, they would be at, you know, a little over five million um, as well, which is about 7%, 8%, so running hot there. And I'd also, just to comment on the, within guidance, you know, we only gave guidance for NPR, and we, we gave the 2.8.4 to get to the 3.2, and we didn't, we didn't give guidance for rate increases, but we talked at or, or cost savings, which was another thing. Um, but I don't go with just if we're at a 3.2, that's okay, because we have hospitals that could put in a 10 or 15% rate increase to get to a 3.2. Um, you know, they could put a significant rate increase, get to the 3.2, and they're living within. So that's just my point of view on, I think they're separate and we can look at them separately, but I, I do appreciate that they are within 
guidance of the 3.2 X, the moving part of the risk of the ACL. But. And, I, and I agree with you. I don't think like we're constrained, but I do think in this particular case for me, it's the leadership around the ACO model needing to really tackle operational change and those sorts of factors that uh, also influence my thoughts. Yeah. UVM. Um, again, I don't think there have been um, changes to this particular um, information. Uh, you'll see that without the adjust, they also are asking for the accounting change um, adjustment. Without it, their NPR would grow at 1.7% over their rebased budget. Uh, with the adjustment, that would be 1.1%. Uh, the value of a 1% commercial rate increases um, in the neighborhood of 4.5 million. So again, the staff um, suggested that the accounting adjustment be considered as a factor. Um, I'm taking from the last two hospitals that um, you would like to um, adjust the growth rate um, according to the accounting adjustment. And so like with the other two, we will work um, offline to figure out the best way to do that. Healthcare reform investments, um, we are recommending, they, they put in um, 8.6 million worth of healthcare reform investments. There are 0.4% allowances, five, um, uh, million, and we're um, recommending that you accept that. Does anybody on the board uh, object to accepting the five million? No. No. Okay. The NPR growth rate again. You can see they're um, they're well below um, the target, regardless of whether the adjustment is made or not. One point seven percent without the adjustment. One point one percent with the adjustment. Uh, your options there to um, to accept or reduce that NPR growth rate. The um, calculation here is that if the rate is reduced uh, to three percent, their NPR growth rate without the accounting adjustment would fall to one point three percent. The commercial rate increase that they've requested is four percent. Um, again, your options are to accept, reduce, and um, we um, said that you could consider reducing to 3% or 2% or some other number if you opt to go the reducing mode. Okay, Tom, is it okay if we start with you on this one? So on, on this one, I, I just again want to, uh, and I won't repeat myself once again after this, but I, I just want to emphasize that this uh, process to me um, has a lot to do with kind of the real time, living in the moment uh, cost shift. Um, we know from past studies that the Green Mountain Care Board has done that the cost shift, just the Medicaid cost shift, uh, for 2017, 2018 is in the $208 million range. Um, and so in this exercise, uh, if we add up the total requests, NPR requests of the hospitals, it comes to about $80 million. And in terms of the suggested uh, sources of, to support that revenue, 3.9% is from Medicaid, 76% is from commercial uh, uh, payers, and 20% uh, is from uh, Medicaid payers. And so that imbalance is one that uh, certainly is not gonna be solved overnight, but it can be at least mitigated if chipped at um, bit by bit. So that brings me uh, to UVM, where UVM's uh, spending trend over the last five years has uh, been at a, about a 5% clip, um, and their total margin history uh, between uh, 2015 and uh, um, 2018 
uh, has been between 4.4 and 5.6 percent. Um, and, you know, they obviously were running hot on revenues uh, in 2017, and uh, they were rebenchmarked. In terms of the source of, to support <coughs> their uh, requested increase, um, 18 uh, million is from uh, commercial. Uh, there's a small amount, 311,000 from uh, uh, Medicaid, and another $6 million, $6.2 million uh, from me uh, Medicare. So um, I'm, I'm thinking here that, uh, uh, that a rate reduction from 4% to 2% on the commercial rate, which equals about $9 million, um, uh, seems appropriate because that would reduce, uh, with that, it would reduce uh, their total margin down to 4.6%, um, which is about $63 million, and an operating margin down to 2.2%, or uh, $32 million. Um, so those are big numbers, um, $63 million or $32 million, and uh, so it's not a cut, it's an increase um, uh, to their bottom line. I also note of maybe some relevance is a, um, uh, a budget profile that was used during the approval of the Certificate of Need process for EPIC, um, the a new um, electronic medical record system that UVM uh, has been approved for and is putting in. And in that presentation, which is about, uh, this one is dated February 17, so it's not that old. Uh, uh, UVM was projecting for 2019 uh, excess revenues over expenses of uh, a little over $60 million. So I, um, uh, and with today's presentation, um, they're up to uh, quite a bit more than that. So I, I feel comfortable that this is 2% um, is still adding a lot to UVM's uh, bottom line, uh, that their uh, excess, excess revenues over expenses is fine, and, um, but to be able to reduce the burden on commercial insurers um, by $9 million is, is important as we try to work our way away from a cost shift um, and uh, toward insurance rates that uh, uh, aren't being, uh, commercial insurance rates that aren't being cost shifted upon. So I think where I am is I would do a rate increase. I think I'd be more inclined to do 3%. Uh, I mean, rate decrease, sorry. <laughs> I approve a 3% as opposed to a 2%, but uh, I'm interested in listening to the discussion. Again, for me, a big factor is leadership in the ACO and moving forward with that, um, following through on the operational change of shifting uh, services to the communities, as Jess had mentioned earlier. Um, and um, I guess those are really the two biggest factors for me. Okay, Maureen. Uh, sure. Um, so when I look at, at, you know, the budgets here, um, I've pushed back a couple times already on the, the top line, and I, I know I have gotten some response from, from UVM, but I question that they're going to be able to keep a 1.1% increase, so I just want to put that out there again. There's not been a great history of um, meeting the budgets. The, the budgets have been exceeded for the past four years, budget to budget, pretty significantly. Um, and you know, part of the pushback has been to not jeopardize in the future, you know, comparing against a budget that might be too low. But I'm going to accept that I've tried to push, and that, that push was, to me, was trying to be helpful to maybe come in with a higher NPR on growth, um, because this will become the budget. And, and to put in context, um, this budget is increasing $13 million um, over the current year. And in the past four years, I think the average has been about 45 to $50 million increase actual to actual, not, not budget to budget, taking that mix out of it. We've had a 60 million increase of 40 million to 40, and I think a 50. And this year we're coming in at a $13 million increase. 
And contributing to that, 25 million is, is rate increases, which is much higher than last year. We only had a one, less than 1% rate increase. So the rate increases are contributing 25 million, um, but I'm not gonna beat that again. I think we'll, we'll revisit it when actuals come in. I'm, I'm not trying to root against them. I'm, I'm trying to say, I really think you're gonna come in higher um, and I understand it's, it's pushing to the cost shift and all that, but it does factor into my, my you know, rate discussion, which um, you know, I'm, I'm coming in around 2 to 2.8% for, for a rate. Um, and you know, I, um, if I were at the high side of 2.8, it's kind of saying that's what we've done, you know, that's what we've requested for Porter and for CVMC, saying that's medical inflation. I also know that um, everything mixes in together. So we're not supposed to be increasing rate for Epic or Miller, and we probably could isolate those out and say, well, that's not what is really what the rate's for, but it, it, it all kind of comes into one place. And I could say some of the rate request is, is for those things. The expense increases have been significant um, and higher increases than the top line. Um, and I really want, you know, the 2%, the when I go there, that's the lowest hospital we've had come in as a, as a rate increase. And I really want UVM to be the leader there and to be, you know, leading with that. And there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, salaries and salary increases. And I'm not going to get into the weeds of, of saying salary and salary increases. But, you know, when you take a 3% increase and then you have some adjustments elsewhere, you know, a 3% increase on the salaries, I think is, you know, you're talking about roughly a $600 million base. Um, so, you know, could there be some savings there? You know, other people aren't getting 3% increase. I'm just, I'm not telling you where to do it, but, you know, I, I think we're not seeing people coming in and saying the rest of, of, as I think Kevin pointed out last week, the last two years, the state of Vermont, which has got to be one of the largest employers, has been 1.7 every year. So, although we like to think 3% is the rate and all the hospitals use that, I'm saying I don't know that that is the rate. So, uh, you know, I'm just pushing back to saying, you know, we've we've got to look to UVM to be making cost saves, making reductions, and um, you know, I I see pushing down to a two or two point eight, and also want to kind of get the elephant out of the room that yes, there was a presentation months ago that said a zero percent rate increase. But that's before we had put the $21 million, you know, towards the mental health. So I just want to get out. You know, we understand you guys came in and said zero, and that zero wasn't going to be, you know, really up for grabs anymore, you know, because of the amount that's going to the mental health. You know, I too, I, I understand what Robin's saying about not not fast forwarding. I, I think when we rebase the 2018 budgets. Uh, Thing I think the board could have done better is maybe given some direction to say we're taking action on 2017. Here's what was over, but we're also increasing your 2018 by 40 million, well into your budget cycle. So you would have expected your expenses would not have trended as high, and we would have seen some more profits there that could have then be used for future rate reduction. And we're only seeing about a three million dollar change. I'm not saying that's you know from the, your budget was 50 million. You're now coming in at 53.5 for non-operating income before non-operating revenue, um, yet on an increase to the top line of over 40 million and, a, and really large increases in other operating expense, some of which is the ACO adjustment, but going from 396 to 410, salaries on top line going up you know, $20 million. So I, I just think and, and bad debt and free care going up 10 million. I pointed some of these out before. I think when you have a year where you're really increasing the top line, you, you also may be able to shore up some reserves. So that's really why I'm looking, you know, between a range of the two to 2.8. Okay, Jess. Okay, um, thank you. So I will echo some of the sentiments I've heard earlier. Uh, I will note that UVM was just rebased. Um, I will note the appreciation I have for their leadership We're also backstopping some risk. I think something nobody's noted is that we do have, you know, long waits for some specialties. So we do UVM does need to have some flexibility in increasing access to some areas. Um, we need to consider that as well. I do also hear Maureen's point about the history of budget excesses, you know, and the 
range of 40 to 50 million dollars so I share your concern about a 13 million dollar increase and really is that achievable and I so I do worry a little bit to some extent about what are the util utilization projections really are they realistic because with a four percent you know uh, commercial rate increase um, I, I'm concerned about the underlying utilization projections I do appreciate that I think what UVM is trying to do is push the some of the utilization down to PNC and, and TVNC, but I don't know if this is realistic. So where I come in at is I think the 4% commercial rate ask is too high. Um, I do think that there are some cost savings that could be achieved that would therefore not warrant a 4% commercial rate increase. I, I'll just name one right off the top. Asking for $2 million in the marketing line when uh, history shows that over the last few years they've spent 500000 That To me, that's $1.5 million right there that they don't need in their expense line. But I do think there's probably some other cost savings that could be incurred um, to reduce that need for that ask. So I, I land between 2 and 2.8. I think the 2.8 for me was, you know, again, thinking holistically about the whole system. The other hospitals have asked for, in their network have asked for 2.8. Um, but I could go down to two. I think going below two, I think would impede some of the progress um, that they need to make in, in backstopping risk in the ACO, the leadership in the ACO, and solving some of the access issues in some of the specialty areas. So. But I, let me add one more thing. I do think that the other thing that influences my decision is they, as Tom said, they have very healthy margins. I mean, I think they can afford a rate cut, and I think you know, days cash on hand at 192 days, uh, total margin of 5.1%. I think that they're, they can afford the rate cut more than commercial rate payers can afford the rate increase. So, so on my end, uh, my thinking was similar to Maureen's in the uh, historical uh, NPR growth and that I wasn't going to uh, recommend a cut to NPR, but I do think that the commercial rate has to be cut, and I was at approximately 2.5%. So I think that gives you quite a bit to chew on there. Looks like 2, 3, 2 to 2.8 was mentioned twice, and 2 and a half. So. OK. <laughs> so um, at this point, I'm going to open it up to public comment on the three hospitals that were just discussed, since we've already taken public comment on the others after the discussion last week. Yes, Jennifer. And please say your name and town. Sure. My name is Jennifer Bertrand from Middlebury, Vermont. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the Medical Center. Uh, I did want to say that our goal during our budget process was to abide by the Renowned Care Board's guidelines to give back to our community and our patients by investing in much needed services and by reducing prices to our patients, all while trying to keep our head above water as we make the transition to value-based care and healthcare reform. We were very transparent and straightforward with our budget. And I do want to address just a couple of items for today's discussion. One being the reserve discussion. And I strongly advocate for critical access hospitals to have a reserve and the latitude to put up a risk reserve. And for all the reasons I outlined in the letter that we submitted during the public comment period, and really in over a 10-year period. And with that, we self-imposed that lower rate increase, and that's really just to cover inflationary factors. Thirdly, I did want to state that even though we're reflecting an adequate margin, that we have a long history of strife with Porter. And it has been finally, finally, that we're reaching a level of sustainability to where we can reinvest in critical capital needs and services that we've been deferring for years. So I just ask that the board please consider this as you make your decision to approve our budget. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Other public comment? Dale. She got something on 
You're going to have to speak up, Dale. Sorry. She got at something that I have been thinking about. I find these complicated um, and I guess hostile budgets are supposed to be complicated. And I find the process complicated in that it, it doesn't seem to, it's supposed to be standardized. Yet every hospital is so different in its circumstances it, it doesn't work. That's one feeling I get. And maybe it's just too complicated, I'm not understanding. Um, but most of the things that you're looking at to use in regulations are what I call dependent variables. They're the end result of a whole lot of something that determines that. And isn't that which determines this more about what you're trying to regulate or what you <coughs> might not be trying to regulate. And that's where I get really confused is if you're trying to get the investments, as she mentioned, having to do with what you're gonna offer as a service, you have to be careful in what you're limiting. And that's where I get really confused. Uh, one of the many places is how can I do that through NPR and know for sure I've got a good outcome? And sometimes I'm looking at, I've got a rebase and things like that. Well, I have a 10 year trend and every single year is gonna be very unique. So I'm just saying this gets, does get confusing to try to and I've listened to all of you, and you have very different opinions on what's, which I like the diversity, but you have very different opinions. I actually think there's more common ground that I would than I would have imagined. Um, so, you know, I think that you've hit on something uh, really important, Dale, is that each and every hospital is a different story, and that's why you can't use a cookie cutter approach. And I hope that that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah. I just got a question just to comment. And I'm again, speak up. I'm way behind on how this is all going together, but I, I cannot fathom how you can have uh, guidelines uh, on uh, commercial ways uh, without being without factoring in the payer mix for the given hospital. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. And number two, I do not I do not understand. Well, appreciate it, yeah. Anyone else? Yes, Mark. Mark Stanislaus. Um, I'm first going to comment from the University of Vermont Medical Center. Um, uh, University of Vermont Medical Center is the hospital's only tertiary care facility. It is the state's only safety net hospital. There are two significant CON projects that are being one that is just barely being finished, which is the Mills Building, and the next one is Epic. And everyone knows the challenges that if you read any articles on Epic, the pressures that that puts on hospitals. So I would just ask that you be sensitive to that as you go through this decision-making process. Okay, the other thing that I would like to speak to is on the 4% commercial rate act. That has zero cost shift passed along to the commercial payers. What wasn't talked about today was their budgeted margin compared to prior years, you know, budgets is lower. So some of that cost savings is already built in and, and they lowered their margin to account for part of that cost shift. So within that 4% ask, which I would argue is only a 3% effective increase because of the timing that just covers 
normal inflation, if we look at your guidance of normal inflation, of the 2.8%. So I think that's very important to get out there. And I worry that decisions that are being made like this, as we transition through such a critical implementation such as EPIC, which is critical to the values of the all-payer model. Getting everyone under one platform to manage the health from so many different avenues of care is critical to the success of the all-payer model. So I would just say, if you're gonna make any changes, now is not the time. So just think about that piece. And that 4% has 0% cost shift, and I cannot resist saying that Okay, that's 4%. The approvals that were just made for MVP and Blue Cross Blue Shield were 5.8% and 6.6%. The hospitals are not driving those increases as much as other expenses are. And we need to uncover what is driving those expenses if we are truly serious about making healthcare more affordable for the average Vermont. Because if it continues to be put on the burdens of these hospitals, there's going to be different conversations about how do you survive in the future. 4% is not excessive. It's just keeping up with inflation. Um, and, and, and Maureen, I understand your points about utilization, okay? And, and, and I can say from the health network perspective, we have some of those concerns also about how that could be. And we reviewed all of their volume assumptions and their volume assumptions for the 19 budget based upon July year-to-day actual are right in line with each other. I also want to say, too, that those utilization increases from prior cycles, they were used to buy down the commercial rate of 2.45% and 0.7%. So the first year that those increases aren't in there to that level, the University of Vermont Medical Center only asked for normalized inflation. And I think to say healthcare inflation at 2.8 to 3%, we know wherever you fall, that's normalized in my mind. You could argue over a 0.2% here and there, but I just want to get those statements out there because that is critical. Um, and so my next comments are coming on behalf of the University of Vermont Health Network, okay? The University of Vermont Health Network is all in for the all pay. That is the pathway to making healthcare more affordable for Vermonters, okay? We are all in. And it's important that the decisions in this budget process are consistent with those values there because it's a delicate balance between all of that together. So I just ask you to be mindful of that. And I would ask you to think out loud and speculate if, if, all of the commercial business was all in on the all-payer model, and that fixed growth factor was there of 3.5% on rates, what would those commercial rate increases be coming in at versus what the final approvals were? The all-payer model is the pathway. That's what the state of Vermont has jumped on board with. That's what I believe the Green Mountain Care Board has signed on, and the University of Vermont Health Network is all in. So, um, and, then the last thing is the structure of the budget you know, review process. There's been a discipline for many years for which these hospitals have worked under, in, in, in my opinion, okay? And, and that process is what I can attest to, at least the hospitals under the health network take seriously when they submit their budget. And it just seems, in, this cycle, there's a little bit of varying from that process. There was no gamesmanship in this process. The medical center came in at 1.1% after the accounting change. Nothing was bumped up. I would argue that every 1% of commercial renal you know, you know, rate, that draws. So if you just take it down to 1% rate, that brings that growth down to 0.7%. 0.7%. So I just ask you to be mindful of that, and it's important to have discipline to the process. Um, and that's all I have to say for today. Jess. Yes. 
want to make a quick comment. First of all, I very much appreciate your comments, um, and particularly the all-in of the, of the network. You mentioned the QHP filing and the rates that were approved. I just want to um, mention to you that the unit cost increases assumed in those filings for UVM Medical Center was 0%. So that's the underlying assumption that went into the actuarial analysis that led to the unit cost trend. So, and that was based on the uh, suggestion back in January or February that there would be a 0% uh, commercial rate ask in the, in the fiscal year 19 budgets. Again, before the mental health change, you know, uh, enforcement action. But so that's the assumption that's actually made by the carriers. So. When we go to a, if we were to go to a 4%, it would be, to some degree, problematic for what we've already approved in the QHP filing. So I disagree to some extent to Maureen's keep these two things completely separate, because I do think we made some decisions in the QHP filings that we have to now at least take into account to some degree in what we do with these hospital budgets. So that's just what I wanted to say, because you did bring up the QHP uh, approved rates. And it's a zero percent I really don't want to get into a public debate, but go ahead, Mark. No, actually, I would just say, in any actuarial analysis, there's a range. And there's a range in all of those assumptions, too. But I would say, if, 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 if they assume the 0%, I'm even questioning more why their rates are so high. If, Pharmacy trend. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, it's more than that. But federal federal, federal taxes. Tax. It's a lot of different things, but yeah. we're not going to get into that today. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment? Okay. Seeing none, Pat, if we could begin with uh, Grace Cottage and move forward and see if we might actually be able to make some decision points. Sure. I've asked um, Lori to present the first uh, few hospitals that you were in last week. So, Grace Cottage. Uh, this slide, we didn't change anything from last week. The hospital is coming in at uh, a proposed budget of $19,292,581. Um, this would be an NPI growth of 3.5%. And they didn't have any health reform investments. And they are not participating in the ACO for 2018. They are requesting a rate of 3.2%. Based on last week, we understood that you accepted their 3.5% growth, and we, um, based on our recommendations, and their 3.2% rate increase based on our recommendations. Okay, is there any questions? Not to someone wish to make a motion? I will be happy to make a motion. I would make a motion that we accept the staff recommendation of a fiscal year 19 rate request of 3.2% and an NPR growth of 3.5% for Grace Cottage. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank one you. down and 13 down. Okay. <laughs> that was the hard one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mount of Scutney, um, on this slide, there is no changes. They, um, they are participating in the ACO for 2019. Um, we had a request for information about their NPR change, it, how much of that might have been um, for New Hampshire. And they said that their, their NPR change is mostly New Hampshire patients that are factoring the change in the increase. Um, they are, their um, NPR growth is 5.2% and their rate request is 2.9%. I'll make a motion on Mammoth Cutney. I move we accept the staff recommendation. 
recommendations of an NPR growth of 5.2 and a commercial rate increase of 2.9. I'll second. Throw in the health care reform investments yeah. to confirm and, it as well. And uh, accepting the allowance of the 0.4% for health care reform investments. Is there a second? Second. Discussion on Bonus Scotney? Uh, the only discussion I throw out is the um, presentation materials that it showed didn't support that the increase was coming from out of state. In that presentation, it, it showed you know that it was actually coming down. So it's kind of changing that that the 5.2 the, the the increase over the 3.2 is related to that. So I mean I'll accept what they put in, but in their presentation here, when they showed the change, it was actually I think slightly declining the New Hampshire resident. But. Um, if I um, may just clarify what I think they've said more recently, um, it's really they were looking at the change in MPR, and I think um, part of it is because of payer mix and um, and uh, reimbursement rates from payers, but what they're suggesting is that a greater proportion of that change is from the New Hampshire business and that the New Hampshire business is growing faster year over year from 18 to 19. So I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. I don't know if that helps or not. Um, no, I mean, I'll go both sides. They, they showed it, but they did show payer mix before. And, but that's the only comment. I think it was in the follow-up Q&A that you received from Mount Escutney where they showed that the greater proportion of the growth was coming from New Hampshire. And so to me, that is why this is compelling. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not typically comfortable with NPR growth above our guidelines, but to the extent that this is coming from New Hampshire, there's other commercial payers and uh, New Hampshire Medicaid that are funding this. To me, this is outsourcing healthcare services. So this is an economic growth opportunity Any other discussion? If not, all in favor of the uh, motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Gifford. Gifford Medical Center. Uh, Gifford's proposed budget is $55,894,653, a negative 6.1% growth. Uh, we are requesting the allowance of 0.4%, um, but it really doesn't matter too much for their budget because they're already negative. They, they did request 590000 excuse me. And they are not participating with the ACO for 2018, but they're planning on participating in 2019 for Medicaid. They are requesting a rate increase of 4%. Um, as of last week, uh, you agreed to the um, health care reform investments, and we are waiting for your what you would like for the NPR growth. We are, had an estimate of um, six, negative 6.8% if you go with a reduced rate of 3% and a negative 7.4% NPR growth, growth rate if you do a reduced rate up to 2%. Um, they have hired a few uh, surgeon and practitioners to increase their um, productivity, and they have implemented their EMR this year. So as I recall, tentatively, um, the majority of the board last week had been looking at a 2% rate. Is that correct?
concern about prior to that was at a very high rate and they're using fee for service and throwing good money after bad and continually with increased rate to cover uh, you know, perhaps what could be high expenses in the underlying business model of the hospital. My view has somewhat changed a little bit. I could, given that they are starting to move into the all payer model and starting to participate, I could And I would throw in, um, I was also at 2%, um, potentially adjusting it to 2.5%, um, you know, to say because they're going with the ACL Medicaid program. I wouldn't go all the way up to 3% would be my recommendation because I agree with you. They had the high charges to begin with. Um, this is another one where it will be a challenge for them, though, I think, to make their NPR growth um, year over year because it's really a 10% growth uh, to where they're trending. But I think they need to get their expenses in line with where their revenue is and not be fixing it by the commercial rate increases. Tom? Oh. Drop my notes. Um, the thing that caught my eye on, on uh, Gifford was that uh, um, they are looking terms of an N their N current NPR request, uh, on paper it's a negative 6.1%, but it equals 9.8% over their 2018 um, uh, forecasted budget or, or um, projected budget. And um, so I, uh, that is a reach to me, um, that, that they would be able to achieve that. Um, so I would be open, and so I think that there's NPR there that they'll probably never get to just because it's, a, it's such a, a, a big reach. So I thought about uh, reducing the NPR by about 1.1 million to 54.8 million, which falls to the margin of our budget review process um, that if they, uh, if they do happen to achieve um, the full 9.8% uh, increase when we're here next spring, um, that that that's within the margin that we don't bet, we benchmark, but um, you know, hospitals can live with that, that, that extra revenue. So um, it's not a substantive uh, proposal necessarily, but um, I could live with a $1.1 million reduction in, in their um, NPR, which puts them within that 2% um, uh, guardrail uh, that we have when we consider rebenchmarking. And on the rate increase, um, um, I'd be open to lowering it to two to three percent, but um, I do want to keep in mind that uh, their 2018, uh, that their request for 2019 is lower than their 2018 budget. So it's not like they are adding to the commercial uh, burden statewide. They are uh, asking for less than they asked for last year or, or were approved for last year. Robin? Um, I would also reduce the commercial rate as uh, for the same reasons that Jess had described relating to the total cost of care and the current level of charges. Um, and I am I'm inclined to be more at three, but I could probably be talked into two and a half if that would get us to a decision. <laughs> so I believe that uh, we're probably somewhere in that two and a half to three range at the end of the day. Does anybody want to make a motion? Where would you say? Um, comfortable with that range. I make a motion to um, put the commercial rate at 2.75%. 
and um, not adjust. I wouldn't adjust the NPR growth rate. I, I hear what you're saying, but I would just let it let it fall. Um, you know, because it's below. But. I'll second that. So we moved and seconded to uh, set it at 2.75 and not adjust the uh, NPR. Um, I think that is smart. Give them the opportunity to try to win back the business that they have lost. Is there another discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, North Country. North Country. Um, we didn't have any changes to this slide also, but they are one of the hospitals that participating this year in the Medicaid ACO program. Um, the Last week, the board um, accepted their HCR investments, healthcare reform investments, to the tune of 0.3%, dollars $237, um, They are requesting a 3.1% NPR growth and a 3.6% commercial rate. If you um, want to change the NPR growth to 2.7%, the rate would be 3.1%. Would you mind if I jump in on North Country, Kevin? Sure, go ahead, Robin. Um, so I've been mulling over North Country um, in terms of the, particularly the commercial rate, because they did come in um, below the guidance on NPR. And uh, my concern around North Country is that given their demographics and given their pair mix, which is the highest Medicare and Medicaid percentage in the state, that there's, that reducing their commercial rate increase just is really tough for them. Um, we know that they're, they're, they're just, their demographics are just so tough and when you look at the social determinants of health and some of the data around their median income, the house, the attainment of education, all those sort of socioeconomic factors. Um, so I think where I am is I would, I would accept what they asked for in this case, given their specific circumstance, uh, that they're jumping into the all-pair model, or they have been in the all-pair model, um, that they're looking to expand into all three payer programs this year. Um, I feel like they really are trying to do all the things we're asking for. And if they had a different payer mix, I'd probably feel differently. But given their payer mix, um, I just worry. Tom? Um, I'm, <coughs> I'm in line with Robin here. Um, if you look at their spending um, and revenue over the last five years, they've operated at an incredibly low uh, range at 1.8% annual growth in expenses and 1.8% annual growth uh, in NPR. Their, um, their requested NPR for commercial um, is 39.3 million for 2019 budget and they were approved at 42.7 uh, million uh, for 2018 budget. So um, it's not that they're, um, they're, they're looking to uh, increase their burden on the commercial market it, 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 relative to their 2018 budget. Um, it will be less. So I would, I would uh, um, vote to approve um, the NPRs requested at 3.1% and the rate increase at 3.6%. Anyone else want to share any thoughts? I would support. Uh, just to clarify, Robin, are you saying the 3.6, which was the budget, or their decision of 3.1? I thought you went back to 3.6. 3.6, I'm sorry. But yeah, so, and Tom, are you at 3.6 or 3.1? Um, I'm at the staff recommendation. Yeah. Which was 3.6.
so it's a little bit higher than uh, I had hoped for, but I certainly could live with that given uh, the demographics and, the, and their commitment to the all payer model. Somebody should. I will make a motion that we accept the staff recommendation with an NPR growth rate for the country hospital of 3.1% and a commercial rate increase of 3.6%. And we accept the uh, healthcare reform investments. <laughs> I'll second it. And I heard a second from Tom. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Southwestern Vermont. Southwestern, um, they had a proposed budget of 165,000.2 million and an NPR growth of 3.2 because we talked to you about their CON last year, so that brought it to um, 5,122,562 for the growth. And they have health reform investments of 1.7 and the allowance is 637,990. They are participating in the Medicaid ACO program for 2018 and their rate request is 3.2%. We have your, uh, oops, excuse me. Your, you accepted their health care reform investments uh, last week and the CON that was approved last year and um, they are asking for 3.2% NPR growth, 3.2% commercial rate increase. If you were to reduce the rate to 3%, the NPR growth would be 3.1%. Okay, and again, just because those votes last week were all tentative, we, if anybody does make a motion, if they could include those into that motion. Discussion on Southwestern. Anybody wish to offer any comments or a motion? Um, sure, I do. I had the recommendation of a 2% um, was my recommendation for the rate increase. Really driven a couple things. One, they're for the services that they're increasing rates um, under the current they're increasing by 5%. So they had um, certain service areas, I think it was in uh, office visits and some of the medical supplies where they were, were zero. The rest of the services were going up by 5%. So what my recommendation was, if we allowed those to be 3%, um, because it was only on, I think, 67% of their services, that would generate a 2% um, commercial rate increase. Um, you know, they, they definitely have one of the stronger both operating margins and, you know, um, balance sheets uh, They when you consider their parent. Um, you know, they manage it well, and I just think that, you know, having 5% on across a lot of the services was too high. So that's why I put in, you know, a 2% rate. So is that in the form of a motion or not? Discussion. So uh, again, um, I think last week, um, Jess, you were in the two to three percent range. Tom, you were at three. Maureen, you're consistent at the two. Um, Robin, you were at the three percent rate. And I hadn't weighed in uh, because I wanted to have a conversation with their CFO. I've had that conversation, and. Um, I would be at the high end of the, the two to three percent range. Would look for a three percent rate, um, in my opinion, for what it's worth. Does anybody wish to make any type of a motion? If not, we can put it off till tomorrow. I'll make a motion and see how it flies. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I can support. Also throw in the with adjustments the, and the yes. HCR investment. Okay. Uh, with the adjustment for the CON for the dental clinic and approval of the uh, healthcare reform investments, with I think. Robert
Robin we made uh, the point last week that we wanted to be explicit that we were not approving the IT conversion dollars, even though I know that exceeds then the 0.4% we want to be that that is going to qualify as uh, investment. Is there a second? Well, I have a second. Okay. okay, discussion. Yeah, I, I would just want to add that um, my point of view on any of these when we reduce the rate, if they are below the, um, you know, if they're 3.2 percent in this case, I wouldn't reduce their NPR to 3.1. You know, I totally understand if you just roll, they, I, they can if they want to. I totally understand if we just take the commercial, it gets them to the 3.1. My thinking is on all these, um, Nobody's that good at forecasting. Budgets are obsolete day one. You know, when we look at the misses every year, they range from 2% below to 2% above. Very few hit. And so it's really just more giving them the flexibility if we reduce a rate, commercial rate, that should they desire, they can keep within the NPR. Because I just think nobody, you know, to knock on 3.1. Um, so. so I think what I've heard Maureen suggest is a friendly amendment to keep the uh, NPR at 3.2. Would you accept that friendly amendment? I would. would the seconder accept it? Yes. Okay. So is there any further discussion on Southwestern? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll say aye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one I'm going to say. Let it know it was, let it, the record know it was unanimous, reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> Rutland Regional. Rutland Regional. Um, this slide really didn't change that mu didn't change from last week. We want to make sure that the board is aware that at their presentation they did come in with a revised NPR growth of 3.1 percent and a uh, rate request of 2.6 percent. A second. second. It's been seconded by Robin. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Good discussion. In my class, when a cell phone goes off, I get to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any, any uh, discussion on Rutland? Um, Kevin, could you repeat that? I was shuffling papers over here and I didn't. So the motion was to um, approve Rutland Regional with a commercial rate increase of 2.6% with an NPR growth of 3.1% and a health care reform investment of $1,012,440. Okay. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Copley. Copley. Um, nothing new in terms of the request here, NPR growth of 5.9%, uh, rate request uh, an increase of 7.9%. Um, they, um, at this point, are not participating in ACO programs for 18. We um, don't know if they're planning to in 19 yet. So um, last week when you all discussed um, Copley, the focus was again on that rate increase, and we heard ranges from 4 to 5 percent. So we, um, we had the preliminary decision as right in the middle, a rate of 4.5%. There was also discussion of requiring the hospital to come to before the board quarterly for budget review because of concerns um, about, about their budget, days cash on hand and so forth. Um, healthcare reform investments, they uh, requested $66,351 worth, which translates into 0.1% uh, 
of um, their 18 MPR. So that would um, make their MPR growth target if we went by our guidance 2.9%. Uh, we do um, recommend that those be accepted and your preliminary decision last week was to do so. If um, the rate were decreased, the uh, rate increase was reduced to 4.5%, that would translate if, if um, you also um, applied it to their MPR to an estimated MPR growth rate of 3.9%. Okay, are there questions of staff? Is there discussion? Uh, yeah, a little on discussion on um, on this one, a couple things. One, I think even with the rate reduction, I, I still think, I know if you roll the rate reduction through, it brings them to 3.9. I just wanted to discuss whether we should make that either the 2.9 with their health, you know, their 0.1 or the 3.2 because they're missing their budget this year. So their year over year increase is 8.4. I don't see that they're going to hit their number. But, um, you know, I'm willing to either let it roll if we just, you know, here you, I would say, opposite of what I said before, here I would say take it down because they're above. If we, if we reduce their rate, I would take it down. And the other thing I would just bring up for discussion is I know we talked about, you know, board quarterly for budget review. I understand why. I just question whether we should make that formally this way or work with them to come in, you know, to, to redo their budget and things like that and what the process is because I think that's probably a little bit above what we've done before. And, you know, certainly they're going to have to accept what we, what we give for a rate increase and, and the NPR, so they're going to have to revise their numbers to get there. Um, and I think we should, you know, bring more of the hospitals in more frequently during the year to see, see how they're doing. Um, but I just throw that out there, whether it should be formally as a quarterly budget review. Um, just on those thoughts, um, I, I'm, I'm fine with having them come in informally if that makes sense to staff and there's not like a need for the, the formal. I, for me, the formal piece of it was more related to the fact that their day's cash is pretty low and they seem, they're just, in, uh, this whole budget is just a hard budget. <laughs> but I don't, I, I don't have a strong feeling about that one way or the other. And I like your suggestion of reducing the NPR so it's more in line with our guidance. So I, I'm not in favor of uh, really formal uh, hearings. Informally, I think we do have to uh, track this hospital very carefully. Um, and, you know, the, the real question in my mind is what do you do with that NPR? Because the uh, <coughs> healthcare reform investment is only 0 0.1. So do you bring it to 2.9 or do you give them a little bit more than that? I don't Is there anybody that wishes to make a motion on this one? Can I, so just on the 2.9 point or the 3.2, um, I guess I, maybe I'm just a, the softy here, but I guess I would probably give them the 3.2 even though that is above technically above what they should be getting at 2.9 um, with the 4.5% rate decrease. So I, I, I think I could go there. I could go, quite frankly, with either one. I, I'm, I, I do think getting them more in line on the NPR is important. Um, do you want to make that a motion? Sure. Then we'll see what happens. So I believe I what I've heard is Robin's motion was to um, allow for a commercial rate increase of 4.5%, set the NPR growth rate at 3.2%, and accept the health care reform investment of 66,351. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? 
If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So, co cognizant of the time, Thank I see. You. <laughs> and uh, knowing that Christina will shoot me if we're not done before four, so it's kind of crazy to start the discussion on another hospital. So I think that we're going to um, end here today and begin tomorrow at 9.30, starting with Northeastern. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs>